I hope this documentary provides an opportunity for the students to, for a pause for thought to look back on their achievements as they move forward into their next major production project. Um, the individual characters provide us with a unique insight into their approach towards creating the characters that they play. Kelly Craig, you played uh, Mrs. Blitzstein and Harry Blitzstein. Um, tell us a bit about the challenge of uh, creating, sustaining, um, and researching a mother and son relationship, given the fact that you're of a similar age. And how did you, where did you start? Um, it was important, I think, that we created a chemistry between the two of us, both as actors and characters from the offset, um, which seemed to come quite naturally. We bounced off each other, and I think... It wasn't forced or anything, was it? It just kind of that, materialised. Yeah, that it was due to us becoming comfortable with our own characters and then reacting to each other mm -hmm. during the process. Mm. Tell me a bit about the period in which this play was set, because obviously, again, 60 years on, have relationships between mo mother and sons changed I, since then? I think that made it easier. That made to... it easier to create the mother and son relationship, because as you said, there's different issues. Um, nowadays, if a son decided to leave home, um, marry somebody else that the mother didn't agree with, he'd probably go and do it. Um, and so it was important that we understood the consequences of what Harry was doing. Mm -hmm. um, and the issue of them being Jewish in yeah. East End, Petticoat Lane? And made the decision for Mrs Blitzstein even harder for her to put, not put her prejudice, the prejudice um, aside, to but to put her children first. Both of you had moments in the play where you had to sing solos. Tell us a bit about that experience. Um, terrifying. It was, yeah, <laughs> very terrifying. Um, it's one thing doing it obviously in front of your peers and the rest of the cast. I think another thing obviously was in front of the audience as well. Um, I think the most important thing you had to remember was just to tell the story through the song as opposed to mm. don't think about you actually singing a song. Well, there are many songs in the show. But yeah. Sometimes yeah. you don't even realise you're in a song, I guess. Mm, yeah, it, just, it flies by. It was um, important, I think, it changed when you you forgot the insecurities you had as a singer, as the actor, and then sang it as the character, and mm. that's when the song worked. If the emotion took you through the song, then it didn't matter whether there was a wrong note. Obviously, you don't want wrong notes, but if you were singing it as a character, then the song... And the background work to the singing, was it just haphazard, or was there some solid work put into learning those songs? A lot of work, and yeah. they weren't just songs you had to go through the, the lyrics could of the song them, in, could you? in the so same way. Yeah. Yeah. What's your lasting memory that you take away with you? More sympathy, I think, for the situation and what happened, um, having researched it. Um, and obviously, I think a lot of our generation could be a bit sens de desensitised to it, a bit numb to it, because it didn't happen to us, it didn't affect us. But actually, having almost sort of lived through that in, in that sense, um, more sympathy for the people that that did go through it in the situation. Yeah, the challenge of being able to step away from your life and appre appreciate the lives of something that maybe grandparents have gone through that mm. are still alive and bring some truth to it. And you were the elderly married Jewish couple. Tell me a bit about what approach you used to define that relationship. Well, um, I found that our relationship built over the um, rehearsal progress because at first we was like, sat there, like, like we wasn't married. But then as we got more comfortable with our characters, like, I was like the powerful domineering one and I'd be like, shut up, shut up, about that to him. And it just grew over the process. We played a realistic um, married couple. We had our little bits of, you know, angst and, and unhappiness, but we played a, a loving, a loving family. I'd just say he was content. He's just there. And just a, a kind of a question really for the characters uh, as we look back at this project. How did you cope with the day-to-day -day living of the reality of the Blitz? What did they do? How did they survive? Um, well, as my character, I just, as Mrs Joseph, so I just got on with it and because my son was in the war, like, 
my, I just went full steam ahead and carried on as I would have, like working on my carrier bag store. And like my good friend we split time as well. Like I lived with her for a short space of time as well. And David? Well, I uh, tried to block out all the bombings and all the, the sadness going on in the streets. And I went on the small policy of a bagel a day keeps the bombs away. What sources and research did you use to define your characters? Well, I, um, first of all, I s went into researching elderly people in, uh, in and around the time of the Second World War. Okay. I also studied my nan and granddad's mannerisms. But my main thing was I spent a week walking around with a walking stick to get into character, and that was really interesting. Okay, Charlotte? Yeah, um, with me, I did, I did do a little bit of research on the war, but um, I think I was watching old people's mannerisms and their traits and things. Even if I didn't get the character I wanted, make the most of it because my character was challenging for me. At first I was like, oh my God, what am I going to do? But towards the end, I fell in love with her and I, like, I still cling on to her a little bit. Well, for me, I um, consider every second as an opportunity to grow and that character helped me grow immensely. So I take that little, that little aspect of that character with me. You were cast as Georgie Locke and Carol Blitzstein, the, the love story in the play. Your families didn't really approve of this, did they? Do you want to tell us something about why they didn't? Well, I think first of all, the, the, the biggest thing was um, the, the Jewish and Christian rivalries. I'm, I'm, my, my family are Christian, and um, Robins were Jewish, and that, that really, really, obviously, just came, came, came to heads, um, obviously, because they, our fathers and, um, and our mothers obviously knew that there was, there was something there, and there was a love there, and obviously it couldn't work, and as well, obviously, um, on, on the stall. Yeah, that's just like the whole reason mm. why it didn't work. And yet... You shared the same street, mm -hmm. side by side the same stores, it, the same enemy, mm -hmm. and yet you fought each other. What's I mean, it all about? Yeah, it, it was so hard because it, it was just another war in, in exactly the same place where, where, where war was happening between our fathers and our mothers. And it was, yeah, it, it, was, it, was, it was very hard to sort of portray, to portray that there was another war going on inside of us as well. So Blitz wasn't just about the, the battle oh, no. of the home front, it was also about the battles of, of conflicting families. I think it almost took, took the war away, uh, like took the seriousness away from it sometimes just because of, of, of how hard it was for all Yeah, and it just showed the relationships between different mm -hmm. cultures and religions and age. What aspects of yourself did you need to change when you looked and created these characters from the 1940s? What did you have to do to physically become these people? Well, the main thing I had to change to fit into the 1940s was I looked at women. That was what I focused on, on how they were perceived and how, what was acceptable, what wasn't acceptable. I mean, our relationship wouldn't... I, now you would link arms and kiss in the street and everything and show your affection more, but back then it was a lot more frowned upon, yeah, I, yeah. especially the whole Jewish yeah. as well. We had to keep it a secret, so... There's a I couple changed. of defining moments in the play where they go to kiss yeah. and, and, and then Mr and Mrs Locke. Yeah. I mean, that, that's exactly what it was. I mean, me and Robin are quite like, tactile people anyway. I mean, we're, we're quite touchy feeling for, for, for us to sort of not be able to, to sort of put an arm round or link arms or, or, or hold hands in character, I think was the toughest part because you almost had to just yeah. simply stop yourself. It was much more formal. It de oh, definitely, definitely. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, there were many parts in, in the play where it would have where I would have felt comfortable putting my arm around her or, you know, just holding her hand, but obviously that... that so you had to set yourself rules? Definitely. Yeah, the rules of the characters. And, it, like, how they appearance, how they, the mannerisms, mm -hmm. the way they held themselves, the way the women, like, the Jewish, the clothes, poor family, Blitzsteins, and the hair colour. Jewish yeah. girls had dark hair. And your lasting memories as you put this one to bed and move on, woods and ever forwards? It's hard, hard, hard to let go. Um, obviously, from um, from such a journey. Um, but yeah, I just think it's obviously move on to big, bigger and better things. And uh, obviously, Georgie and Carol, obviously, be, be, be with us. Yeah, and change and challenges. Change, good. yeah, definitely. <laughs> one for the outtake.
And if I'm not much mistaken, you two play two elderly gentlemen who had served in the First World War and kind of get their wars mixed up a little bit in the play. And they talk a bit about um, Gallipoli. Um, how did that First World War experience obviously shape their friendship? Because they're obviously very close characters and they really do entrust each other with almost everything, including their lives, ultimately. Yeah. They've obviously known each other for more than 30 years. The chances are they grew up together. Um, they're a bit like a, a married couple in some senses, the way they are with each other. What skills did you use? Um, obviously, after getting the script, uh, I went away, looked at um, footage on the internet, um, images, Getty images. Um, but if I'm perfectly honest, I spent a lot of time just visualising the character in my own head, rather than, rather than going away and looking at images of people that had, that had done it before, for instance, or real characters. I was more interested in seeing what was in the script and then creating the character in my own mind, so to speak. Watch footage, um, footage on the web of the war, try to get into the idea of, of what was happening at the time. Um, read a lot of stories, personal stories on the BBC archive. I think you have to realise the um, importance of what happened. Yeah. Um, you have to realise that our generation doesn't necessarily understand the true horrors of what went on. So you, ha you have to really cast your mind back and, and get into the character of um, what was happening at the time and then make sure that you, you sort of you put forward a truth of what, what occurred at the time. Yeah, I think there was a lot in the play that wasn't actually written. There was, there was a lot of information that you could gather between the lines. Certain things would be said in the play and they would relate to events that had happened that weren't actually depicted through the course of the play. So I think when I read into it and looked at that, I could, you, you could gauge and get a sense of you know, the, the feeling of the time, basically what each character um, was, was going through, basically. Maybe living through a war like that, um, it, you, you probably get a bond that's actually almost stronger than marriage because you're, you're saving each other's lives on a, on a daily basis. Um, and I think we tried, basically we tried to spend as much time as we could with each other in character, yeah, in character. To, to try and create that bond, really, as successfully as we could. What are your lasting thoughts about your experiences in playing these two endearing elderly gentlemen? Great affection. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which, is a, which, which is a little bit strange considering it the is. type of characters they were. You know, although, although they, they come across as likeable characters, when you look deeply at their views and what they stood for, they're pretty much dinosaurs in terms of today today's attitudes towards things, yeah. situations. I'd, John? I'd just love to have gone on playing them forever, really. That's, um, well, I guess the get great challenge skin. is the next character you're going to play. John, John, thank you very much. Okay, thank, thank you. you.